Hello everyone, hope you're all well. I'm here today to film a what's going to be slightly more talkative, not that any of my videos are not talkative, but it's going to be a bit more of a casual video. I don't have any lights, I don't have a microphone. I'm basically just here to film and show you guys what apps and what techniques I use to edit my Instagram photos. Um, I know I'm really late to this video, I'm like God knows how many years late, like five years late to the Instagram game. I had a really lovely girl called Rabia contact me on Instagram. We got chatting, we've become friends, and she now, I'm so sorry, this is gonna be so washed out. She now takes my Instagram photos for me and I couldn't be happier. We have done three shoots now. I call them shoots because we take most of the shots in a day and I'm just really happy. Obviously the normal like person who doesn't do YouTube doesn't have to do stuff like that but because I obviously do YouTube it's just easier to do it that way so obviously she can go on with her life like day to day and I'm not bothering her like every other day saying can you take my photo for me um, I'm definitely not at that stage yet since her really um, I've got loads of tips and tricks from her so these are not all me um, I have to thank her for a lot of these and just generally like a lot of just learning off Instagram and stuff like that where should we start off with should we start off with just like a normal photo? I think that's a good idea. For a normal photo, I just use um, normal camera. I don't like portrait mode. I use an iPhone, by the way. Everyone asks me also on my Instagram what camera I use. I mainly use just an iPhone 8 Plus um, camera. I don't use a... Unless you can see that my photo is in good quality and that's normally for brand work, I just use an iPhone. Um, so it's either Rabia's phone or my phone and it's normally mine now because then she doesn't have to be bombarded with pictures on her phone. Um, also, if my voice is going, I've had about like five hours to sleep. I had my management's... Um, my management had like a party event thing last night that I went to and um, I stayed over at a friend's and I'm just dead. I've had like five, five hours sleep, my voice is gone. Like. I, I look a little bit worse for wear. Oh my god, we haven't talked about the lips. Um, I, I have got lip injections, by the way, if I look any different. Um, they're still a little bit, like, swollen and stuff, but there's the elephant in the room if anyone else, if anyone, like, noticed, but that's coming, um, that will be talked about more in another video. But anyway, um, if I'm just using a normal photo, so I'm just going to give you guys an example of a normal photo here that I would, like, want to edit. All I have to do is, um, my favourite app to use if I just, you know, don't need to do much with it is something called VSCO Cam. I call it VSCO, um, I know some people call it Visco, but I just call it VSCO. And VSCO just basically has lots and lots of filters. You can pay for an upgrade, but I don't think you need it. My favourites are, normally, I will tell you guys my secret, T1, or I love, love, love P5. It's kind of got like a bluey hue to it, so I don't always use it, but I love those two. Um, I sometimes use M3 as well, but normally it's T1, P5, or M3 that I use. And I never, like, I rarely, rarely use them to the full capacity. I normally sort of tone them down. Just, yeah, just to kind of tone down a little bit. I don't ever want it to be OTT. So, VSCO is definitely the program that I use most often. And not only does it have, like, filters, VSCO, you can also crop the photo, you can um, brighten it up using exposure, um, and my main thing that I like to do is use the grain tool. Um, the grain tool just gives the photo that very, very Instagram, um, like, older photo style effect, and you can do it as much as you want or as little as you want, and then I always, always sharpen my photos too. I don't know if a lot of people do, it's just kind of like what I'm into. So I'll always, always, always sharpen and also um, grain. If the photo needs it, I'll add, add the exposure, like increase it a little bit. Sometimes I use contrast, but it's very, very rare. Because normally with photos, it's you have to be quite good with the lighting and everything anyway, um, and then just kind of, you can change it up a little bit, but going and changing the whole photo is something that I don't really want to do. So on VSCO cam, that's kind of all I do. Um, I tend to use it pretty much on all my photos. So if you're ever wondering what I've done to a photo, I've pretty much used VSCO cam. Then if you want to leave it there, the photo will look great. But if you want to kind of go up that even more Instagram level, um, I use another program called Afterlight. I had to do a bit of searching with this because for ages, loads of people were doing that like weathered photo look with a lot of like white speckles on the photo like as if almost you found the photo in a drawer somewhere and it was like a little bit ruined and um i googled it and i found afterlight afterlight is another one that i'm absolutely in love with with afterlight you can just choose photos from your album and you can kind of do a very similar thing it also has like filters so um you can just change up the photo and the main ones that i use are dusty and light leak um dusty will give you that dust 
effect. And I normally use either 01 or 02 depending on the look that I want on the, the photo. And again, it's very rare that I use them to the full capacity. I normally lower them down a little bit because I don't want them to be too stark. And then I also use Light Leak if I wanted the photo to have a kind of light effect. So um, I'll show you another app in a second called Huji. On Huji, sometimes um, on the off chance, your photo will have like a light streak somewhere and I'm really into that effect. Um, I just think it looks really cool, but I don't use that one often. Normally I just use Dusty um, and it's really cool. The other thing you can do is a very similar thing to best the SEO cam. You can change the um, brightness, which I, I prefer to exposure. You can sharpen the photos and you can grain them. So technically I could just do it all on here, but I like playing around with the um, filters on VSEO cam, which I love. And then I just kind of transfer them onto here. Similar thing, you can also crop photos, but that is pretty much all I use Afterlight for. And I absolutely love it. Now, if a photo is more kind of like more straight up, if it's more of a selfie, so let me go on one of my photos that are a selfie so you guys can see. Um, if someone says that they don't face tune like a selfie or a photo and they're probably like a YouTuber or something, I'd be very, very shocked. But so for example, a photo like this one of mine over here, where it's like quite, you know, straight up, um, I'm facing like the camera. I like to enhance the photo and make myself look enhanced. My um, Facetune um, abilities are awful, so the app I'm going to be talking about is Facetune. I'm not great at Facetune, I know loads of people who are, but I'm I'm not great at it, but I have used it in the past, and it's just interesting, like, especially when you're good at it, like, have you seen James Charles? Like, James Charles is, like, next level amazing at Facetune. So, if I did want to Facetune a photo, the main thing that I use, I'm going to just go on it so I know what I'm talking about. The smooth tool, all it's going to do is smoothen your skin. So I'm someone who has a lot of texture to my skin. I, um, I'm not blessed with super smooth skin. So sometimes as well when you're taking a selfie up close, you get a lot of texture and I, and I, I don't like it basically. So all that will do is smooth out some of that texture. Again, I never go in really, really stark because you still want to see some skin texture, otherwise the photo looks really fake. Another thing that I love to do, um, I think Patricia Bright used this once in a video similar to this and I nicked it off her, is use the details tool. The details tool will basically, it's almost like sharpen, but more specific to the area. So it's kind of like a sharpening tool. It will just make anything that you want to have a bit more detail which is obviously what it's called, um, be a bit more there. So I mainly use that for eyes. Um, I know Patricia used to use it for eyebrows or if like, for example, I have a necklace that I wanna kind of show off, I'll use it for the necklace um, or I want something to kind of show a bit more detail. So for example, a top like this, I might um, detail the check. So you can really play around with it and do a lot to a photo. It's not just kind of, you know, just eyes and stuff like that. I would say don't overdo it with detail though because the photo, some of my last photos like, my past year's photos I hate because I've really gone heavy on the detail and I'm, I, I, don't, I don't really do that often anymore and I do mainly leave that for um, closer up selfies and stuff like that I don't tend to do this on my normal photos another thing that um, James Charles is like insane at doing is using the tones tool with the tones tool you need to kind of learn a little bit more of how to use it it's not something that is easy to use but basically the tones tool, I'm just gonna use a photo so I know what I'm doing. Use the picker to pick a lighter color that is kind of like a highlight shade. And what you wanna do is create your own highlights and accentuate them basically. So what I like to do is add highlighter if it isn't somewhere that I want it or just accentuate it. So I'm always trying to like better the photo somehow. I'm not changing myself. I'm just kind of adding something to it Sometimes you don't need it. It's just every now and again if you want to add a bit more glow to a decolletage area or you just generally want to make yourself um, like sometimes I've done it with my hairline as well. If like I have a hairline area that I'm like, oh my God, I hate this. I'll just kind of add in some darker color to my hairline to fill it in a little bit just because you can see these things in photos. Sometimes you can't really tell them in real life, but you can really see it in photos. Um, so I have had to practice with this. I'm not amazing at it but I do really enjoy using the tones tool. Pretty much that's all that I'm really good at on Facetune. Um, I wish I was better at other things, but it's Facetune as long as you're using it sensibly and you're not kind of being like super fake with it. It's, it's just a bit of fun as well. Facetune, I would totally recommend for a selfie. So 
If I was taking a selfie, I would normally take it to Facetune first and then use the SEO cam and then use Afterlight. So that's the kind of thing that I've done in that photo. Um, but I was just talking about more like outfit photos in general where I wouldn't really use um, Facetune. Then we come on to the app that Rabia showed me and that app is Hooji. So many people use um, Hooji nowadays, it's such a cool app. But essentially this is what it looks like and Hooji, you have to take the photo on Hooji in order to get the Hooji effect. Rabia obviously told me about that. It has such an amazing cool effect guys. Um, what, how can I put it? It's a very oversaturated look. Um, it's a very, very defined colour. Sometimes the photos will look great. So sometimes when me and Rabia are shooting, she will assess the photo. I'm saying like she's like assessing the photo but you know what I mean like she'll look at the photo and she'll be like oh we can use Hooji for this but sometimes she'll be like the colors are a bit off or it's too dark you have to have pretty good lighting to use Hooji and it definitely doesn't work for every single color out there it can sometimes look a bit odd but I love it because it gives me that like and I've said this to Rabia like that tanned like I don't know you just look good in Hooji I feel like I feel like you, you just look good um, and as I said sometimes Hooji will give you like a light streak effect so for example this is a photo that we took um, shooting that I'm probably never going to use. But you can see the rainbow effect um, on the top of my head. And it's just really cool. Um, I really, really love it. So I think that's kind of it, um, photo-wise. I don't really do much else. I'm, I'm not someone who likes to have a very consistent Instagram. I like to post different things. You know, some people have a really themed Instagram. I don't really do that just because... With brand work and stuff, not every brand wants like a Hooji photo. Do you know what I mean? It's a little bit difficult, even though obviously it's in keeping with my brand, it's a little bit hard to sometimes, you know, filter that through, but it's just all about gauging what you want to do with your Instagram. And as long as you enjoy your photo, that is all that matters. But for all of you guys who um, wanted this video, then there you go, there's my tips. I'm definitely still a novice, but at least it gives you guys some ideas. I really, really do hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you all in my next one. Um, I have filmed my lip filler journey. I am still trying to debate whether ethically I want to do it or not, just because of my job and you know what I mean like but then I was sort of like why not show it in a good light because I'm so happy and you know show the process really well um, and educate but then I'm in two minds about it you know what I mean so yeah we'll see that's probably the next videos um, coming up and also I have a pre-filmed video that should be coming up soon so if I look slightly different in like a pre-filmed video it's not like I've gone back in time it's just that it was pre-filmed so i hope you guys all enjoyed this let me know down below give me feedback on whether or not you will use some of these apps and i will see you all soon